Dear students, I am Adhra T.S., guest faculty, Department of Biotechnology, SN College, Kollam. Today, we are going through a lecture about a small and important topic known as DNA fingerprinting, which is included in our MSc Biotechnology syllabus, Module 4. So, let's begin. So, what is meant by DNA fingerprinting? It's used to identification of individuals. And it may be termed in another way such as DNA profiling, DNA testing, DNA typing, and genetic fingerprinting or molecular fingerprinting. So, the process of DNA fingerprinting was developed by Alec Jeffress at Leicester University in 1984 as a form of genetic analysis. And it was first used in the law courts of England in 1987 to convict a man in a rape case. And it has now been used successfully means worldwide in many crime and paternity cases. Although we know that about 99% of our human DNA impressions are unique and permanent. So it is permanent for each individual. And DNA profiling uses repetitive sequences that are highly viable called a variable number of tandem repeats vntrs particularly short tandem repeats tandem repeats actually means it's alternating and uh, not alternating it's continuous versions of dna sequences okay and the analysis of variable number of tandem repeats or vntrs is used to detect the degree of relatedness of another sequence of oligonucleotides making them ideal for dna fingerprinting then we have to go through and uh, what is mean by variable number of tandem repeats. A variable number of tandem repeats. You can see here is the picture. Picturization uh, or VNTRs is a location in a genome where a short nucleotide sequence is organized as tandem repeats. The sequences are arranged in a uh, schematic way. And this can be found on many chromosomes and often shown variations in length between individuals. And each individual variant acts as an inherent allele, allowing them to be used for personal or parental identification. And mainly there are two principles of families of VNTRs. We are commonly uh, uh, termed like that satellites. And there are mainly two types of satellites. One is microsatellite and another one is mini satellite. Microsatellites, which is also known as simple sequence repeats or SSRs or short tandem repeats or STRs. And a mini satellite is also referred to as VNTR, which already we discussed. And it's a section of DNA that consists of short series of bases almost 10 to 60 bases, base pairs are included in that. And their analysis is useful in genetics and biology research, forensics, and already in the DNA fingerprinting. Then, how the DNA profiling process is taken place? This process begins with a sample of an individual's DNA, typically called a reference sample. This reference sample may be a blood, a smear, then a semen, then a hairs, including the roots and uh, from the nails and from skin, all are included as blood, um, sorry, reference samples. And the most desirable method of collecting a reference sample is the use of buccal swab. In the case of rape cases, the vaginal uh, uh, swabs are collected. As this buccal, uh, as this reduces the possibility of contamination. So uh, this process is uh, doing in a uh, non-contamination way. Otherwise, it will be, uh, we can't identify the uh, victim or the crime. We can't process the crime. And when this is not, when this is not available, it may need to be used to collect a sample of blood, saliva, semen we already discussed. So, 
how is the DNA fingerprinting procedure is taken place. So uh, the steps includes isolation of DNA, then cutting, sizing and sorting, and transfer of DNA to nylon, then probing, and finally the print is obtained. In the probing in India, uh, a reputed institute known as CDMB, Center for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostics in Hyderabad, uh, which uh, uses a snake probe named BMK uh, by uh, the scientist Lalit Singh, and it is accepted uh, worldwide, and it is commonly used in uh, most of the reputed institutes of India. And this uh, BMK is isolated from a snake named Bangaris fasciculus, which is uh, which having a chromosome Y, and it is effective for the process of DNA fingerprinting. It is used as a probe. Okay. Then we can go through the steps, major steps. First, at first, we have to isolate the sample. So here, we isolate the blood sample, and then the DNA is extracted from the blood cells. Then the DNA is cut into pieces using restriction enzyme, known as molecular scissors. Okay, also known as molecular scissors or molecular scalpels, whatever you know. And then the next step is the DNA fragments, the cutout fragments, are then separated into bands during electrophoresis in an agarose gel. And then the DNA band pattern in the gel is transferred to a nylon membrane or nitrocellulose membrane in a, by a technique known as Southern blotting. And after that, the radioactive DNA probe is prepared. And the DNA probe binds to a specific DNA sequence on the membrane and the excess of probe is washed off after Southern blotting procedure. And after that, at this stage, the radioactive probe is bound to the DNA pattern on the membrane. And the X-ray film is placed next to the membrane, detecting the radioactivity pattern. After that, the X-ray film is developed to make visible pattern of bands, which is known as DNA finger fingerprint, like, our, like taking our thumb impressions. Okay. Then, then next, we what are the methods of DNA fingerprinting? We have to go through that. Uh, one is electrophoresis, then PCR, polymerase chain reaction, then restriction fragment length polymorphism, RFLP, then random amplified length polymorphic DNA, that is RAPD, and amplified fragment length polymorphism, that is AFLP. So what is meant by electrophoresis? Electrophoresis is a separation technique that is based on the mobility of ions or the movement of ions in a charged, in an electric field. So here the positively charged ions migrate towards the negative electrode and the negatively charged ions migrate towards a positive electrode. And the ions have different migration rates depending on their total charge, size, shape and therefore be separated. So look at this figure. Here the image is about gel electrophoresis technique. So we can go through that. First, the DNA sample is taken and using the restriction enzyme, cleave the DNA sample and then it is poured in a chamber. And after that, the electric current is passed through the chamber and the DNA fragments move towards the positive and positive charge to cathode ray and here the smaller DNA fragments moves faster further than the larger fragments. This is all about electrophoresis technique. Then polymerase chain reaction PCR. Hmm? Polymerase chain reaction was developed by Carrie Mullis of the CETES Corporation in 1983 and this process of DNA sample is denatured into the separate individual strand and specific DNA primers are used to hybridize to two corresponding nearby sites on opposite DNA strands in such a fashion that the normal enzymatic extension of the active terminal of each primer, that is the three prime 
end leads towards the primer. So in this fashion, new copies of sequences of interest are generated. We obtain it by PCR method also. Then the repeated denaturation hybridization extension in this fashion, like that we have to go through the image. In PCR, uh, we obtain the genomic DNA and the target DNA. There occurs the three process, namely denaturation, annealing, and extension. In denaturation, uh, we apply heat briefly to the DNA sample, separated DNA samples. And in the annealing, uh, it is uh, the cool, uh, we apply uh, some cooling. That's cool to allow primers to form hydrogen bonds with ends of target sequence. This is a cycle one and then extension. In the extension, the DNA polymerase add nucleotides to three prime end of each primer. After that, the, um, we obtain different banding patterns and here the targets are arranged in white boxes for your uh, inference. Then the PCR analysis amplified and isolated regions on the strands of the DNA under examination. The next is about restriction fragment length polymorphism. RFLP analysis. It is the RFLP analyze the length of the strands of the DNA molecule with repeating base pair patterns. The basic technique for de detecting RFLP involves the fragmenting of a sample by restriction enzyme, which can recognize and cut DNA whenever a specific short sequence occurs in a process known as restriction digestion. And the resulting DNA fragments are then separated by uh, length through a process known as agarose gel electrophoresis and transferred to a membrane via southern blotting procedure. And this hybridization of the membrane to a labeled DNA probe then determines the length of the fragments which are complementary to the probe. An RFLP occurs when the length of the detected fragment varies between individuals and each fragment length uh, considered as an allele and can be used in genetic analysis. So next is about amplified fragment length polymorphism or AFLP. Here it is much faster than the RFLP analysis and can be used in PCR to amplify DNA samples. It relayed on variable number tandem repeats. We all discussed about later. And, uh, and it is used to, to distinguish various alleles which were separated on the polyacrylamide gel. And by using the PCR analysis to amplify the mini satellites uh, loss of the human cell, this method probe provide quicker in recovery than the RFLP. However, due to the use of gel in its analysis phase here, there are issues of bunching of the VNTRs, uh, causing misidentification in the process. So at last, what is about the applications of DNA fingerprinting? It is used mainly for the diagnosis and developing cures for inheritance disorders. The disorders may include a cystic fibrosis, hemophilia, then Huntington's disease, familial uh, hypercholesterolemia, then Alzheimer's, then sickle cell uh, anemia and thalassemia and many more. Early detection of such disorders enables the medical staff to prepare themselves and the parents for proper treatment of the child. Then uh, the biological evidence is to identify criminals. Hmm? Uh, whenever fingerprints are not available, but the biological specimens are available, uh, like blood or salmon, uh, then um, saliva, uh, then uh, teeth, uh, bonds, uh, and so on, hair with roots, or items of clothes, clothing, uh, blood smears or um, vaginal uh, smears in the clothes at the scene of the crime, then these items may prove to be valuable sources of DNA of the criminal. Since the year 1987, innumerable cases have been solved with the help of DNA fingerprinting evidence. Then another application is on the basis of paternity dispute. Uh, then another uh, application is about the personal identification. So hope you understand this lecture.
Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.